And a very good evening. We are live. Yes, of course we're live. <laughs> of course we're live. You always have to you have to let the flywheels run around for 10 seconds. I've told you that before. I know. You keep telling yeah. me that. I'm I impatient, know. Justin. I'm just jumping at the back of I can't wait till those wee girls with clipboards get you on a game show on the BBC. They'll be they'll be they'll be Lucy Lou and you. <laughs> oh, don't you worry. I'll get them. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I tell you. Justin, I'm laggard. I'm absolutely look, shattered. You look at you look at do you know why? I was I was actually employed in uh, in work today. I was engaged in work. Okay. And I'm not used to it. It's just, it's, I walked around Belfast. I was actually tutoring guides today. So I walked round and round and round and round. Okay, and good. What was the weather like? I have a wee touch of sun and I got snowed on. So pretty much typical. So it was raining, snow, and sun, that sunburn. Well, we've got a couple of guests uh, tonight to talk to. Uh, they're standing by watching in the wings, in the green room, having a sip by the looks of it. Uh, Excellent. So, so we better better get cracking with the news then. You know? Aye. Uh, oh, I just I just see James Doggery. James, I've tried a little bit of this. This is fabulous. This is James' own spirit. Uh, it's only aged a few, uh, a, a little period of time. Um, and... It's lovely, Pete. Uh, obviously, it's not nowhere near uh, matured enough, but uh, very nice, very nice. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Okay. Yes. Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me you're threw it out because it was in the bottom of the box. <laughs> it was. It was in the bottom of the box. I didn't see it was there. And I had the, I had the box lined up to be recycled. Therefore, I hadn't thrown it out. And I picked it up and I heard it rattling in the bottom. I was, Ooh, hang on, and that's when I that's when I discovered it. So, uh, James is it's only six months in the cask, but uh, the, the lovely peat smell coming off it, excellent stuff, excellent. Oh, listen, we better say hello to some of these people. There's too many people watching already, so I've got to say I've got to say hello to them all. Otherwise, they go out of my feed, and then I can't have to scroll up to find them. <laughs> evening to you, Mark. Good evening to you. Remember to comment, like, and share if you like the show. Tell your friends. Uh, Trevor Watson's tuned in. Good evening, hello, Trevor. Uh, hello to you. Uh, Julie's on the show tonight. You're in early, Julie. Good evening. Uh, Mark Kerr's always first. He reminds me of Kerry Moses and Robin on the video. They're always first. Uh, James and Moira Doherty, Ulster just beat Saints. Happy days. There yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Mulkey says, Good evening. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, Tony McEwen, Tony McEwen, yeah, is evening. Looking forward to the show. You're watching this every week. Why don't you sponsor it? Why don't, doesn't old Gary and Darcy sponsor it? There you go. Yeah, you get even more mentions. Uh, William McLennan is saying hello. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, Michael Matthews is saying good evening. Uh, James Moore Doherty is saying six months. That must be the. Uh, the that's the spirit. that's how long it's in the cast. That's how long the, the new yeah. mix in the cast. Uh, there's Bernie Hayes saying uh, hi from Philip McConnell. There you go. Uh, Robert Gustafsson, uh, hello, sirs. Good evening to you. Totally Irish. Hello, sir. Uh, Robert, have you got your have you got your whiskey yet? Because I sent it over. I was going to I was going to say it's like Eurovision. I was going to say nul point. So no, there, no. We, there we go. Linda Cox is saying uh, good evening and. Uh, Brian Redden is saying hello from Cincinnati, Ohio, oh, yeah. U.S. of A. Right, Brian. Good evening to you. That's good evening, sir. That's a new name for me. Do you know him? Do, do you? No? Um, I don't, I, I don't recognise it. I do apologise if I should recognise it, Brian. I do Brian, tell us, tell us how you found out about the show. Tell your friends and uh, spread the word. In spread, the, spread the word, brother. Spread the word. Ohio. Yep. Uh, now, uh, we we'll better get on with the news because we've got two guests to talk right. to tonight, and one of them is one of them I want to talk to more than the other. All right. No, I, I can I understand why. Let's just, let's just say Paul's very glammed up tonight. He is. Anyway, he is. He, he is. is. Oh, no. Paul. No. No. This week in whiskey, Justin. First up, <laughs> Jameson. And as you say, they live in hope. <laughs> Jameson have opened a new travel taste house in the Dublin airport. So the taste house at, loop, at the Loop uh, Terminal 2 marks a commitment to continual innovation and a drive to redefine the retail environment. Very nice. Uh, the interior has had blown glass artwork by the artist James Early. And I meant to get a couple of uh, 
stills of, of James Early's work. It's really quite nice. Um, okay. So, uh, obviously, uh, it's nice to encourage young artists. It's nice to get proper art. Uh, I, li I like design stuff. Anyway, the store has a wave and learn touchless digital tech. You know all that stuff, Justin? You'd, you'd love all that. Oh, I love you'd, that. Yeah, it should be like the Matrix. It's, it's like being on Sky TV and you can do things like this here and move pictures around. Aye. I Aye. want one of them. They're about two grand. They're about two grand just for that. Aye. I know I know, this, I know. the hand movements you've been making. Anyway, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> now, it's touchless t digital tech, so shoppers can explore the products without touching the screen. The global travel retail market over the last few years has proven to be an important and exciting area of expansion for the whiskey industry. Uh, Irish distiller CEO Conor McQuaid said, We are proud to launch our taste house at Dublin Airport, where travellers can be immersed in and enjoy one of the strongest brands on the spirit scene. Yeah, so Jameson doing this innovation, it seems a very strange time to launch it whenever there's practically nobody <laughs> going well, to the airport. It's probably but, an easy time to get the work done, Marty, whenever there's nobody about the airport at all, you know, but it looks, yeah. it looks the part, it looks good. I like, I like, it the, is that the stained glass in the back there? It looks well, excellent. Yeah. It. yeah, it does. It really looks nice. Um, as I say, just, I suppose it's, well, I suppose it has to be launched sometime. So, yeah. So if you're going through Dublin Airport, pop in, have a little half in and see how you go on. Okay. Uh, and uh, I believe there's a new whiskey region that's been recognised. Uh, yes. yes. They've, they've, they've put down some uh, regionality. Now, a few... It looks like Glen, it's Glen Vey. I know that's Glen Vey. It's not as nice as Glen Arm, let's be honest. Uh, put it like this. A few weeks ago, I was asked where I thought the next sort of whiskey region would be, and I said Germany. Well, I was, I was, I was kind of wrong. <laughs> There's loads of them that started popping up, and none of them's Germany. Um, so where, where do you think that is? I'll give you a I'll give, give them a clue, you, Justin. Can I give? I love giving them a clue, uh, and then yeah. I can insult them if they get it wrong. Uh, let me see. Uh, is it? Is it? Peter Jackson loves this place. Where is that whiskey region? You start talking about it, Marty, and then you can reveal where it is at the end of it. It has a long history of whisky, mainly because there was lots of Scottish people emigrated there back at the start of the 19th century. Uh, Billy Conley talks about this. When they arrived over, where this is, the northern part of it's lovely, sort of subtropical, nice and warm. But all the Scottish people decided that was too nice, so they headed south where it's a lot wetter and colder. <laughs> and they went to New Zealand. New Zealand has regulated their Whiskey region. Okay. Now, in 1997, Willowbank was the last operating distillery. It closed and there was no, there wasn't any operating. Today, there's 19 distilleries and they've just set a set of formal regulations. Well done, Michael Matthews. Yeah, Julie got yes. it right. Julie, Julie got, got it right. Too. There you go. Yeah. Just, it, if you ever listen to Justin on Belfast 89, anytime people get the question, he sets a quiz, and any time they get it right, Justin berates them for using Google. <laughs> well, <laughs> so they, get it right. they admit it. They admit it. So, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. I hear them on other radio stations. Uh, <laughs> uh, somebody says, don't be using Google because it defeats the purpose. If you did it in a pub quiz, you'd be thrown out of the pub quiz. You would be. Yeah. You? you would be. You would be. Um, not that I would ever use my phone in a pub quiz. That's never, never, ever, ever, ever happened before. Anyway. Uh, so... <laughs> oh. Now they've two styles. They've, they've regulated two styles of whiskey, so single malt and New Zealand whiskey, which, is, so, but they're pretty much similar to Scotland and Ireland. They're, they're following a sort of set formula. With the it has to be made in New Zealand. Now it can't be distilled higher than ninety four point eight percent. It has to be in wooden casks, so they're not restricted the same way as Scotland is. But it has to be oak. Uh, 700 litre for a minimum of two years, so slight differences there. Uh, bottled at a minimum of 40% ABV. Now, one of the things that's defined in it that's a little bit strange is substitu substitutions to malted barley must clearly be stated on the front, i.e. single malt rye whiskey for for single malt. So I'm not, that can't agree, it would be, it would be strange to find out exactly just what they mean by that. I need to do a bit more digging. Um, now they have 
as I say, 19 distilleries, uh, South Pacific, Southern Green Spirits, Thompson's, Cardona, and that, there's, there's more. So you'll see that there's an awful lot more uh, of these. And now that they've defined it, regionality, again, that's, that's really quite uh, it's really quite interesting that they've, they've felt the need to do that. So, yeah, nice. Good, 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 good. I do have a graphic, but it isn't firing for me, so you'll have to imagine the bottles. There you go. Imagine, imagine some of the balls. Now, next up, do you remember our good friends at River Rock? We do. They were very generous. To us. They have, very generous. They have very the, nice. wonky, the wonky bottles, like wonky beds, don't they? They had the wee wonky bottles. Um, <laughs> look at the. Bring up that on full screen. Look at that for a nice. You're out. It's bracing. You're out for a bit of a hike, waterfall in the background. You're up in Scotland and the Highlands. Seems seems like a bog standard sort of uh, sort of whiskey wee dram advert sort of a thing, wee, uh, wee, and yeah. uh, it seems pretty pretty normal to me. Yeah. What uh, somebody somebody uh, like the Mad Men took offence at this, <laughs> didn't they? Yes, the fallen file of the Advertising Standards Authority over two different adverts. Now. The authority said it gave the impression that whiskey had been consumed at an altitude of 3,500 feet. Now, I'm going to give a bit of sagely advice to all you crazy kids out there. Don't be getting drunk and deciding to climb mountains. The people at River Rock were never suggesting this. <laughs> it was never anybody's intention to get you to climb mountains full of whiskey. This was a celebratory drink for having done some hiking, essentially. And if you were stuck at the top of a mountain, one of the highlands in Scotland, you might be appreciative of a wee dram of whiskey at the top of it because it's what we would call Baltic, freezing, ice cold. Well. <laughs> so it would warm the cockles, so to speak. So the Advertising Standard Authority have now banned this advert and told them they're not allowed to uh, advertise whiskey on the side of a mountain. Seem, seems a bit extreme. If I remember rightly, the River Rock wasn't bad for a, a new release. I th put it like this, the River Rock didn't have bags of flavour and taste. We, we established this, but it's extremely well made. It's, a, it's got a lovely um, mouthfeel and is a quality spirit. Not huge of flavour, but that's that's not a problem. It's extremely reasonably well valued or well priced. And they're do, trying to do environmental stuff and try and promote people doing outdoor activities. <laughs> so but just don't do it and get pissed. Essentially that's what we're trying to trying to say. We're going to the big boy auctions now, aren't we? Yes. Now Sotheby's. Sotheby's auction house have released their market report for this year. Now uh, last week we were talking uh to Whiskey Companion. Remember the Whiskey Companion? Uh, yep. they have reported that Whiskey trading is going through the roof, along with wine, it has to be said. Spirit sales now make up 19% of the auction sale share across uh, auction and retail. Four years ago, it was 1%. So it's went from 1% to 19% in four years. Okay, Macallan alone, we bought the Macallan here, Macallan alone was 7% of all wine and spirit sales at $6.4 million worth was sold. Okay. Uh, average price for a bottle of spirits on, on Sotheby's, okay, now this, this goes to show you the difference in class, was $7,058. Okay. 75% of the buyers, of the new buyers are under 50, and 12% of the buyers are under 30. Okay. Now, in total, there were 20 auctions of, of wines and spirits at Sotheby's, and that was for a total of $60 million in online sales. Now, that's just enormous. And what it's showing is... Well, people are, 1 to 19% is big. It's big. It's huge. I mean, you think about it, that $60 million in, in spirit sales. Now, what you're, what you're beginning to see is people um, invest in their money in whiskey. And it's just getting more and more popular, more and more popular, more and more people are doing it. Um, banks aren't giving people any interest rates, so people are investing in assets. And 
well, if you're going to invest in an asset, why not in something that <laughs> if it goes down, you can open it up and have a drink of it. So I know we we bang on about um, auctions, and I know a lot of people on here are like whiskeys for drinking, but I invested in a bottle of George Best Scotch this week. So I did. And a guy offered me £25 for it. Mm -mm. No. I, no. I think George Best would uh, would fetch a, a premium than that. I mean, I could probably get £25 for a £5 George Best fiver <laughs> mm. at the minute. Mm. So, uh, we, so that's... We, we, we've, we've a, a lot of virtual drams to talk about tonight as well, don't we? Well, it's... There's online festivals. There's the whiskey festivals. It's coming in towards that season. And there's lots of Scotch whiskey. So we have our whiskey festival, the Spirit of Speyside, Whiskey Show of Duff Town, World Whiskey Day Weekender, Campbelltown Malts Festival, the Fesh Isla, so the Isla Festival, and a host of all these festivals. But we have our own. Now, all of these very worthwhile doing, but we have our own in the shape of Mr. Paul Keane. We do, and uh, Belfast Whiskey Week is on from the 23rd to the 31st of July. Uh, yeah. Don't worry, it will fly by, Paul, won't it? It certainly will fly by. <laughs> there am it is. I, am I on the screen? You, you are, are. I. You are. I'm sitting there listening to the banter. That, that, that's good crack. I was enjoying that, <laughs> Marty. I was enjoying the news. <laughs> Good news. Good. good news. It's good news. How are but, you, Paul? Long I'm time up. no see. I, oh, yes. <laughs> Meeting up in laybys. That's all we need to know. Yes. Um, Meeting up Justin. in laybys. <laughs> it was it's essential essential business, Justin. Essential oh, business. All right. All right. Justin, thank, thank, you you meet. For the, thank you very much for the invite tonight, sir. Very kind of you. Um, I, I, I'm going to have a wee drama. I'm just going to have a wee Dunville's here. Okay, mm, so just nice. while we're just while we're chatting, so it's the uh, Paolo Catardo Sherry cast finish. Um, Lovely. So yeah, eighteen year old. Uh, yep, yeah, just have a wee dram here just for the crack. But yes, I'm, I just cracked. I just I just poured myself a wee salty uh, red. A wee red that, salty. Yeah. Well, I, I'm Lovely. having lime and elderberry. Elderberry, actually. But do you know what's in this lime and elderberry? What? No, 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 no. <laughs> that Kaloan Pachi. Ah. Good very, 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 very nice. Listen, before we start, I've got to say hello to all these people because there's too many to say hello to tonight because either you or Stuart Kennedy have brought loads of uh, people on board tonight. Ralph Burst is saying hello from Austria. Guten Abend, Guten Österreich. Guten Abend, Österreich. Yep. Uh, how's Arnie? Uh, Robert Gustafsson is saying, I haven't yet. Perhaps the customers drank it and I'll let you, let you know if when. <laughs> that, I wouldn't put it past them. No, I promise you they are posted, Robert. They're coming, they're coming. Uh, Jamie Cotter is saying, good timing to start the show just after an Ulster win, celebrating pints and drams in. Yes. Uh, Brian Redden is saying he's going to share the show with uh, McConnell. Well, sure. Thank you very much. He's a McConnell's fan. He must have seen the, the lovely post that Sarah put up for us. Yeah. And bring it in the shot there. And Brian Redden, uh, 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 and he's an Irish whiskey fan. Mark Diamond oh, saying, point. hello, evening, gents. Uh, Hi, Michael, Michael Matthews uh, is saying, we'll be getting on the plane half cup then. I think uh, that's the taste house he's referring to there. All right. Dublin. All right. Not and much he, new there. <laughs> the perfect way to fly. And, and, and Robert Gustav is, is asking, are you really broadcasting on YouTube today? Had to head over to Facebook and reveal my identity. Yes, we're mm. on uh, YouTube and Facebook simultaneously at the exact time. And then a replay goes out on Instagram and also in LinkedIn as well. It's definitely going out and it shouldn't be locked out in your country unless you've marked yourself as under 18 or under 21 or under 12 or something like that. Just, Justin's not allowed near anybody under 18. <laughs> Don't you be saying stuff like that. <laughs> Only, joking. Only joking, folks. I, I actually... So that Facebook and YouTube can't say anything about this show, I actually mark it as not suitable for kids. So if you're using your kid's tablet, you, you might have pro a problem. I mean, it's not up to us. It's up to off license is not to serve drink to children. But actually, talking of, talking of underage things, I've heard that the, the lottery has dropped from, eight, from 16 up to 18. You have to be older to buy a lottery ticket. Do you know that? Yeah. Wonder why they wonder why they did that. 
to be well, fair, Justin, that's not really a big concern of mine. If I'm totally honest, my my son's four years older than that. <laughs> I, I don't understand why. The, the, but I mean, do you, Paul, do you understand that? I mean, they want the voting age to drop down to sixteen, but yeah. yet they've put the lottery age up to eighteen. It's bizarre. I think, I think gam. I think gambling. You know, I think what they're trying to say is it's gambling, and gambling should be you know older. You know, and, and align with um, and align with uh, you know bookies and all of such like eighteen. Well, well, I lost 20 quid in the Grand National today, and there's my lottery tickets. And hopefully, if I, if I win the money tonight, that'll can be I just, I'll can be I just say, all that stuff at Sotheby's auction. Rachel Blackmore, what an absolute unreal. genius. Absolutely unreal. unreal. Tell me and joke, joke, tell them, and then wins the Grand National. Oh. Unbelievable. And not, here, if you, just back, if you just back the female riders today, if you only back the female riders, and you would have made some money today. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that was the, that's what it was about. You know, you had the chance to make a lot of money if you're going to go into that kind of gambling. You know, yeah. just back in female riders, you would have won. You know, you would have won big today. I try. I always try and tell people. People don't believe me when I say the official, the unofficial sport of Ireland is actually race horse racing. Oh, what? pretty much everybody I know gambles with horses at some point. Now you know, and lots of lots of people. It's their hobby and, and really their passion. The likes of football, uh, Gaelic and all that kind of stuff <laughs> way down the list in terms of what people actually watch, you know. Fuck you, have people all over the country watching horsey racing every yeah. day. There's races daily or, you know, about the season, lots of it. Yeah, I want to come back on a, a couple of things you'd, you'd said earlier. One, virtual walk through the Jemison experience. That looks absolutely fantastic. Doesn't it? Um, it you know, it looked great. I saw, saw the thing for that. And also, you talked about the, the George Best whiskey. I'll go one better, Marty. I have a bottle of George Best wine. Actual is wine. And, you know, someone offered me a £1,000 for it, and I still said no. I think uh, boy offered me £25 for that bottle. Um, no, why? I, 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 th Keep I it. think you need to up that a little bit, my friend. Uh, you know, Keep it's a thirtieth it. anniversary for uh, the one in the European Cup. Unreal. Hang on, I'll go and get it. Hang on, bear with me. Keep sitting here. Keys away to get it. Um, super. No, Justin, you've been having you've been, your your shows have been going absolutely wild. Uh, you've been doing some some great stuff so far. Um, they, they have. We've had some serious guests on. I mean, when were you on? Was, I'm sure it's coming out nearly a year ago. I'm conscious that we're keeping a lot of Sarah waiting. Right, uh, you were on with us, wasn't it? Nope. Yeah. Fuck it. I think we're, we're we're on. Yeah, we're on during last year. Um, past when it was, but uh, yeah, maybe the, maybe the summertime last year we we're on. Time so, flies. We also do a podcast now that's available on smart speakers and wherever you get your podcasts from, and, and it's going very well with as many listeners. To it in India as we have in Ireland, believe it or not. That's unreal. And you, that just is convert, unreal. you just convert this conversation into the podcast, do you? Or do you... Oh, I do that, but then we have a dedicated one on Wednesdays as well. So it, it's going, it's going extremely well, extremely well. Ah, oh, super. Fair, but, fair. but like this, this week, this week we have last Saturday we did our show. Then the audio files of that got uploaded. We did a podcast on Wednesday. I did two whiskey tastings this week. Uh, tomorrow, get the Sunday life because I review this tomorrow the Mulberry Cask oh, lovely. Um, Method and Madness, which is a very strange beast, but uh, it's in the Sunday life tomorrow. And that's uh, on top of all the interviews I do for the, the radio as well. <laughs> <That's not real. laughs> it, 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 it soon adds up. I mean, I can't yeah. tell you the number. I mean, I'm losing track of the number of shows we're recording a week now. A, you're, doing a, you're doing rightly, guys. And here, listen. Um, I don't know. I haven't picked up a Sunday Life for a long time, Marty, but I do see it when you post it on the Facebook. It's good to see those re-reviews. Can't wait to taste the Mulberry uh, Method Madness. Haven't had it yet. Don't have a bottle yet. Um, you should have said it. it. You should have said it. I brought you up whenever I was well, handing you know, over that. I should have done. I'm waiting for it to come. You know, it's not released in the North yet. We haven't got it in retail in the North yet. So... It's obviously retailing in the south. Paul, uh, even I have a bottle sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Paul's plenty of bottles that we don't have either, you know. I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. Possibly. Right. Tell us about Belfast Whiskey Week this year. Oh, do you know what? Thank you very much for even giving me the opportunity. I told you, I think it, I'm always humbled when people ask me to come and talk about it. Um, so, yeah, look, it's, it's... I need to say it carefully. It's pretty damn big. Like it's very, very, very big, and um, at the moment we're topping um, tastings alone about seventy plus tastings. Um, events throughout the festival, probably in around about one hundred and twenty events. 
So 120 events, and that includes music, comedy, uh, debates. There's um, <laughs> obviously the tastings themselves. There's potentially some films. There's some interviews. Um, there's a, a, a little mini series that's going going through the, 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 the festival. But yeah, it's it's pretty big. It's all virtual at the moment, you know. So even though we might have people in audience in Belfast. Yeah. It's all virtual, so you know we're we're doing the whole thing again that we did last year, which is going out around the world and saying to people around the world, "Listen, come to Belfast, and we'll come to you at the same time. We'll come to you simultaneously." Um, so everything that we're doing is geared to tickets being sold here and you know products being delivered to people, no matter where they are at the moment. Um, and last year we had people from you know as far as Singapore, Australia, uh, Mexico. America, Canada, most of Europe. So it, it, it was great to get out to so many people. And again, we want to see something very summer. So we're kind of looking for an around about 1,500 participants this year. Um, that's At the moment, that's not un unimaginable. Um, cause the, just because the amount of content we have. Um, yeah. We're running two simultaneous uh, live streams. So two simultaneous live streams per day for 12 hours, 12 to 12 each day for nine days. It's pretty damn big. <laughs> it's the biggest festival. It, c clearly, it's the biggest festival in the world at the moment, which is virtual. It takes well over any of those uh, London-centric yeah. uh, shows or even Scottish virtual shows. It's far bigger than those. It is. Um, and we have our own platform. So we've spent, um, or, you know, we just signed off a, a really, really, really big IT deal to have our own kind of platform. So we're... We're not doing it through the usual channels. It's not going to be on YouTube or Facebook. It's going to be through our own platform, which yeah. is a fantastic um, place for everyone to come together. You, if you sign up, Marty, and you will be signed up because you're going to be doing some stuff with the festival. But when you sign up, you'll be able to see everyone else. You'll be able to see all the participants. You can go and click on Justin, for example, sake, and you'll find out where Justin works, what he does, do you know I mean, who, who he likes, <laughs> what, he, you know, what whiskeys he wants to drink. I don't want to know what Justin likes. Ah, I don't want you, it. <laughs> you I mean, well, maybe Sarah. So maybe you know you'll find out what Sarah wants to do. What you know, what she's interested in. You'll be able to go down Sarah's resume, click into her LinkedIn profiles. I was into... I was at a conference recently using that system, and it's it's pretty impressive. Paul, I must admit, yeah. So can we I, are, can, we're we're going just, big time on that. Can I just say to everybody watching this, this is Paul has done this pretty much all by himself, and oh. to, from. From what he's done, I mean, this is this is sort of year three now. This is this yeah. is the third yeah. year of it, and from nothing to what it is now, it's just incredible, and it's an absolute credit to you. It really is the amount of effort and work and everything. I know what I know what you were doing last year, going down to to to, to bottle all the stuff. I mean, people don't appreciate just how much time all that takes, yeah. and it's a huge huge effort. And the fact that you're sending it all over the world, there's loads of people won't even send. Um, miniatures from, from from England over to to Ireland or to Northern Ireland now, and it's just I mean it's just the fact that you're doing it all is is a real credit to you and a take my hat off to you. You know, certainly it's about having the right partners involved, people who are willing to you know to to work in those kind of spheres. But yeah, I mean, there's no, I mean, yes, we have some we we have some sponsored partners of the events, but to be frank, yeah, I mean, it's there's a couple of us working hard making it happen. You'll see some call to arms. We've got like, um, we'll have some jobs that we're looking for people to take on board, some paid positions, because the festival is really, really big. So, <laughs> you know, is. we've got guys that we need to go out, we need to do, I think we're looking for 25 artists, we're looking for 25 comedians, uh, we're looking for 10, uh, sorry, 18 DJs. Uh, so, 18 DJs, 25 musicians, 25 comedians. Um, and we're going out, we need to film them. So, we're going to have to pre record a lot of that stuff. So we need to, you know, we, we need to find those people. We want local people from Ireland yeah. involved in, in all of that. So we'll call, call to arms there. Well, there's a great group for that media therapy, Northern Ireland. You'll be able to find them all on that. Oh, well, that's you know what, Justin. You know, if you know these people and you want to, you know, communicate that, we're we're going to be putting that information out onto yeah. onto social media. You know, we'll use Northern Ireland Business Forum. We'll use lots of different things. But yeah, I mean, if there's specific groups where people want to get involved. Because here, I want to showcase, this is very simple. And what we did last year was very important. You know, we, we, we brought on lots of artists last year, lots of comedians. And it's about it's about paying these people during this pandemic. These people had no jobs. They were not in yeah. bars. 
They were not in you know clubs. They were not you know getting paid for their performances. We brought them all on board. We you know. And, and Let, let's them. bring Sir in, and we'll have a word with Sir here at the same time as you, because uh, obviously there she is. She didn't she, is. she didn't know why I was going to do that to you, Sir. <laughs> did you? <laughs> well, Sir, I thought no, I didn't. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> I was looking down, looking down my phone there, just watching a comment. <laughs> I, I like I like the spring it on you. Now introduce Sarah Justin. Well, Sir, Sarah Kennedy is from Belfast. McConnell's. <laughs> McConnell's. McConnell's. Irish whiskey. A very very old brand. Very very old brand. Do you know I gave away I gave away a bottle of McConnell's uh, during the week there as a prize. Uh, so we, we did a couple of prizes for the festival, and I gave away a prize. And the first prize we gave away this this week was a bottle of McConnell's. There you go, keeping it real, Sarah. Why not? Getting the message <laughs> out yeah. there for you. Do you know what I mean? A, a Be Belfast brand for Belfast Whiskey Week. Hundred yeah. percent. You got it right. No sweat. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Straight out there. Mm. Uh, no, Sarah. Yeah, have you guys got your ticket yet for Belfast Whiskey Week? Not yet. Not yet. Not I don't know what, shame I don't, on them. Mine. You put them to shame. Sir. Put them to shame. You know what I mean? You're quite like call them out. I, I got I got oh mine my. nearly two weeks ago. You know I was on on the ball. If I had your money, Sarah. If I had Justin's money or your money, I'd be all right. I'd be I'd be I'd be able to buy these things. You know. I tell you what. Can I actually just talk about that just for a second about cost, right? Because that's Please do. Be something I think that'll be something I think a lot of people want to get. You know, look, we've got all these brands. You know, lots of brands from around the world. You know, so it's not mm -hmm. just uh, Irish whiskey brands. There's brands from everywhere, Scotland, England, parts of Europe, you know, Australia, America, Canada, lots of different countries where their brands are coming to Belfast, you know, to, to, to showcase. And I think that the, the, the festival has to be, you know, very accessible. So it needs to be accessible virtually. People need to be able to access it, but, f you know, financially accessible. So, you know, we, we aim to ensure that everything we do is at the lowest price point that we can make it. And that means, you know, trying to, trying first of all for the brands so they're, 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 they're able to come on board and not feel that they're prohibited by cost. And at the same time, that people, participants, festival goers are not prohibited by cost. And also people like, you know, Justin, who maybe doesn't like whiskey and doesn't want to drink whiskey, doesn't really <laughs> care a bit much about whiskey and really just wants to drink potching. Um, he, he, can, he can buy a ticket for the festival. And he can watch the whole nine days, doesn't need to buy a dram, doesn't need to buy anything, and he can pay for the whole thing, and it'll be a very small off one-off fee. And we'll have that out there as a one-off ticket. If people just want to purchase, just to come along and be part of the crowd, be part of the whole experience. That's an excellent we'll, idea. Paul. Then we'll have that there. That, you know? that's, a, that's an excellent idea. Yeah. But listen, thanks very much for coming on tonight, oh. we're, we're going to concentrate on Sarah and yes. what McConnell's have to touch. Get, get me out of here. Get me out of here. No, we're going, to, we're, going to, we're, going to we're going to have you back on again before the uh, uh, the, the whiskey week, no doubt, because uh, it's it's well, it's how long is it now? It's it's only about three well, months away now, isn't it? Well, it's not, it's uh, we're, we're we're April, May, June, and then it's in July, so three nope. three and a bit months we're flying. Three, three and a bit months, but listen, th thanks for coming on tonight, and uh, all the best. Take it easy. Thanks, thanks for taking that stuff down for me that, the other day. You. Cheers, mate. Thank you. All right. Cheers. As always. Bye bye, mate. Bye bye. Hi. Hi. Paul can talk. My time to shine, now, then. <laughs> it's your time to shine. It's your, it's, your, it's your time to shine. But listen, Paul, 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 I don't even have any makeup on. Marty looks dead tired. And you look I'm like not... you're really about to go out to the sweet <laughs> afton or something like that there. No, just, just a wee bit of makeup, you know. Have to, have to come across well. Well, the thing is, nobody can actually go anywhere, Justin. I should have said. I... Um, that's it. You should have said what? What were you going to say? Said, I, should, I should have said that. I should have said that. Um, I wake up like this, but I really don't. If I had all to come right. on here without makeup, yeah. but it scourges also. All right. <laughs> no. yes, so guys, we, we, me and Justin both wake up looking like this. I, I, I am absolutely knackered. I've spent all day walking around <laughs> Belfast, and. I, I haven't done it for about a year and a half. I'm, I'm, I was having to point stuff out to people, and it was just, nah. I better say hello to some of these people because there's an awful lot of people watching tonight. Uh, Michael Matthews is saying he's lucky enough to spend a couple of weeks touring New Zealand. It was in his wines phase. Yeah. Uh, Frank Hearn saying, what is a pub quiz? 
for that matter of fact, what's a pub? Uh, Stanley Sung is saying uh, good evening. Um, evening, Stanley. Uh, Mark is saying always uh, like a tipple on a long hike to the top of a mountain, yes. You're not allowed. The Advertising Standards Authority says you're not allowed to tipple on the top of a mountain because it's dangerous and reckless. Uh, and uh, Michael Matthews is saying, uh, could could we have a swim in the Irish Sea? Nope, you're not allowed. Uh, Mark Kerr, it says he had to share his hip flask and Errigal. Yeah. Uh, Connor Ben's fight is on tonight, lads. There you go. Better offer. Better offer. Yep. Uh, nope, he's uh, dad. He's Stanley saying hi to Gary Arthurs and Andrew Dixon. Mark Kerr is saying, I have a bottle of Joey Dunlop. Doubt it would taste great. Think of donating it to charity. You can donate it to us. Isn't that right? Yeah, uh, Mark, sir, Mark. You can donate it to us. <laughs> one of uh, my old-time sporting heroes. Don't be getting rid of that one. Maybe Robert PM. just having the scent. Paul is everywhere now. Yeah. He'll take over after Ryan Tuberty. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, he'd do a better job than Ryan Tuberty. <laughs> Gosh almighty. Uh, let me see. Uh, mm -hmm. Fair juice, Paul has to drink four nights a week. Tough station. God love uh, Paul Redden is saying, Paul and Sarah are Facebook stars. Yes, they are Facebook stars. Yes. Uh, <laughs> are you are you YouTuber? Are you YouTuber? Uh, Gary Malloy is saying, hello. Uh, Gary Malloy in Stockholm. Great show. Spread the word. I, 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 want, I want to be able to say hello in Swedish, but I haven't a clue. I can do it. Sarah, <laughs> oh, do you want to say hello in Swedish? Do you want me to do it? Helga Mega Alga uh, Weagle. Helga Mega. No I made that up, by the way. I made that up. Uh, James Martin. How do you know Swedish, <laughs> Justin? What, made what, that sort up. Of, what sort of films have you been watching from a Swedish origin? That I, is can't, possible? I can't tell you because we're getting Zuckerberg. <laughs> and, uh, Paul is on the show. It's like a horror show now. Oh, way to watch The Exorcist. She, she, <laughs> she, she, uh, safer offer. Uh, Fanola McGregor is saying Belfast Whiskey Club take over. Yes, he, he's on everywhere. He's on every night. Uh, Sherman Wright is saying, uh, "Go ahead, lads, have a cracker. I'm enjoying me a wee tip on myself." So, oh, by the way, just before you go, oh yes, Sher Sherman Hand and his 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 thesis this week for his degree. Can I just say, I know Sherman pretty much all my life, and Sherman Wright a few years ago wasn't in a good place. He's a, he's a lots of trouble in his life. And a few years ago, he picked himself up, went to Stirling University, his hand in his thesis. And I know loads of people. Loads he graduated. Of people. I've seen his pictures of graduation. He, well he's, done. Well he, done. Absolutely. I take my hat off to him. I really do. An absolute star. and A lovely fella. I, I know him for years and years and years. Well, we better give Sarah our dues tonight. She's been right. patiently for I do, 40 I do apologise. <laughs> we do apologise, Sarah. This is kind of how this always goes. We end up talking to all these people. Don't, and I just don't see, worry about it. It's all right. I just see Brendan has made an appearance. Um, mm -hmm. whenever, whenever Paul said, Belfast Whiskey Week's going to have some debates, I thought, hmm, I wonder who he could mean by that. And lo and behold, that Paul's Brendan. <laughs> yes. So uh, <laughs> I wonder. Sarah. Finally, Brent's a great guy. Yeah, he's one of the best. He's one of the very, very best. Yeah, we we, now, we story is that I was down in Whiskey Lab about in two thousand nineteen, and Brendan like took so much time just to chat me through some of the you know some of the whiskey releases that he was going to bring out and some of his pot gene. And to be honest, I hadn't really tried much pot gene before I was down there, and um, yeah, it really blew me away. Definitely converted me to the to the pot gene crew. Oh, I've, so I've, a great guy. I've, it, it's it, uh, genuinely, I think Irish pot chain is one of those things that at some point it's really going to click and people are going to understand just how good it can be. Uh, and and it'll, it'll go from zero to hero very, very quick. But McConnell's. Now. On to, the, on to McConnell's. On to McConnell's. Hey, Justin's brought up a graphic here. I don't think people maybe appreciate just how big. McConnell's the brand was back in the day. So we have a graphic up here. Mm -hmm. This is at the bottom of the Raven Hill Road. And it was <laughs> this is back in, in the 1920s. It had a malt house, it had the distillery. It was a huge concern. So tell us a bit more about it. 
Okay, so um, McConnell, the Cromac distillery that you're seeing there uh, was built in the 1800s. Um, and that was because uh, Belfast was a hive for Irish whiskey. So um, whenever, so that, that, that went on for maybe until the early 1900s. And, um, that was because of, of prohibition and, and also because um, the invention of the continuous still, but also because McConnell's had a, a huge fire um, in one of their warehouses in Dunbar Street. And that fire actually just completely destroyed half a million uh, gallons of whiskey, which completely devastated the company. Now, they did continue on and they really were positive. And in the media, if you look at any of the old newspaper clippings, they were insanely positive. You know, they, they yeah. came out really quickly and said that they'll meet all their orders. They were, they were very positive about it. But ultimately, it, it, they didn't survive much longer. Um, they eventually wind up in the 1930s, 1940s, that, around that time. Um, and that was because of prohibition, because a lot of the, the liquid would have went to the States. So, yeah, unfortunately. But now, um, for years, obviously, a lot of the, uh, the Irish whiskey distilleries disappeared and there was only a handful left. But now, as you can see, there's a, a huge comeback, a huge re renaissance. And um, our brand as well is... Uh, we're going to build a distillery here in, in Belfast and it'll be the first time that uh, whiskey is distilled in, in Belfast in, in over 90 years. So it's yeah. incredibly exciting for us as well. I'm sure it is. Can I just say one thing? I love the branding of the bottle. I'm a big fan of branding. and I don't think sometimes people appreciate just the cost that goes into designing your own bottle. And for have this, the flute at the end of it, the, the, the badge on, the, on that, uh, even... This, this, for anyone who has done any research on McConnell, this is basically the livery that was on the, the original bottles. Um, I think you've been very sympathetic to the original bottles, and I, and I take my hat off to the brand, and I really do. Yeah. Now, well, luckily, because um, we actually had a bottle uh, in, in, like, available to us, uh, I think Willie Jack has a bottle. I think he's the only person who has one of the original bottles. <laughs> Surprise! Um, so we were able to actually. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, Willie James got all of it. He has a lot. Mm. But it, we were able to really um, tap into to the original brand, but also try to give it a more of a contemporary feel. But mm. a lot of the elements of the bottle are, you know, just the real hats off and a nod to Belfast City. So yeah. Yeah. Now, now it says on the bottle, um, the year seventeen seventy six. Okay, now McConnell's, mm -hmm. going back to 1776, explain where that date comes from. So the date comes from all of the original branding. Um, all of the original branding says established in 1776. Now we've done our, our research and um, it, it's very hard to find those things from, from back in 1776. I think records start a, a good bit after that. But um, because of all the all the original branding and and the, the fact they used the McConnell's name, you know that 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 date is probably very very significant in the start of of McConnell's Irish whiskey and whenever they started to distill. But the actual Cromac Distillery was built in the eighteen hundreds, so that was yeah. whenever they were a bigger production. Um, so yeah, you can't really it's not a hundred percent if you can go back into the records to find anything back to that date. Unfortunately, it'd be interesting yeah. if we could. So. I've done my family tree and I understand how hard it is to get records beyond a certain point. It's almost it's just pretty much impossible. <laughs> but the thing about it is McConnell's would have started off as as probably spirit dealers. You know, they'd have bought their whiskey from probably the old distillery up in Devis Street and, and that kind of thing. Brought it down in, um, had sold their whiskey and if it was popular, then they moved forward. I've, I read a book, we've put a, a podcast about Johnny Walker into the thing, and that was kind of what Johnny Walker did. They end up buying distilleries, but McConnell's built their own. And what a lot of people don't appreciate sometimes is that Belfast was huge. They talk about the shipbuilding, they talk about um, the rope works, they talk about all these other industries. What people don't realise is that whiskey in Belfast was absolutely enormous. And McConnell's was yeah. one of the, one of the Cromac distilleries. You only distilleries have to look in, in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna. That's what I mean. You only have to look at the city and look at the old old buildings, and 
um, some of the the fact that our, our our city still stands, you know, it wasn't really affected by the wars, and all, a lot of the buildings still are still there in existence, and a lot of those buildings were um, headquarters and warehouses, and for some of the big biggest brands in Irish whiskey. So it's it's really it's fascinating to see, especially around the cathedral quarter. It's it is amazing, and a lot of the, I didn't realize myself before I started. But I've been doing a lot of research and it's probably one of the most interesting parts of the job, especially because it's been locked away and sick, so I've had a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> Everybody's a lot of time in their hands. Now, I just see Robert uh, t- talking about a very nice balanced whiskey and a very nice, um, a very approachable, very very reasonably priced whiskey. Now, this... This is a little bit of a bugbear of mine, if I'm totally honest, that I, I read, I, I gave off about this about two weeks ago, where somebody said a, a 10-year-old whiskey at 100 euro was about the right price. Mm, I beg to differ, <laughs> you know. Um, I understand Irish whiskey's at a premium, but, you know, blended whiskey, everyday drinkable sort of whiskey. So tell us about what's in, in this bottle and price. Okay, um, so McConnell's is a five-year-old whiskey. It's a five-year-old blend, and we decided to ha- put an age statement on it because we will continue to have that at five years old. Um, it's also forty-two percent, which um, it's just. I mean, I know a lot of brands are, are going for the higher ABV and in, in alcohol, but with a blend on our 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 standard product and staple product, we are we'll keep that at forty-two percent. You know, we have other plans for other things to come out in the future. But this is going to be our consistent staple product. It's a it's a malt and a grain blend. Um, yeah, it's be fair. The product at the minute, obviously, we're not distilling it because our distiller isn't isn't here yet. But um, we're sourcing it in from uh, Great Northern, and whenever we whenever we have this, our component will definitely the bottle. But that probably won't be until around twenty twenty seven. Whenever our product becomes five years old and yeah the self and whenever you're tasting the whiskey um i have i've had conversations with people before where it is an approachable whiskey as brian said uh but it's also a complex whiskey and you do get a lot from it and some of the more experienced whiskey drinkers really enjoy um having having a neat whiskey with it as well but if you follow me at all on social media, it's it's also incredible with a cocktail, which I find is a great way to introduce people to whiskey. And I find that given my age and the fact that I'm a female, a lot of my friends and, and my sisters wouldn't have been uh, whiskey drinkers. But um, over the past number of months that I've been working uh, for McConnell's, I've introduced so many other people to whiskey through cocktails. So it's a great it's a great whiskey and a cocktail as well. Justin, I can't hear you. I love cocktails, by the way. He does. <laughs> Justin's our co- resident cocktail drinker. All that Dale Boy stuff with the sparklers, that's Justin 100%. Now, we're getting some really nice positive comments in about uh, McCall's. There's Frank Hearn saying, really like the words on the back of the bottle, gently rested in select bourbon casts. That's nice to hear, Sarah. No, that's brilliant to hear. Um like the way you speak about whiskey and the terminology really draws people in. So I, I, if it's great to see some positive feedback about that. Uh, Fanola McGregor says, uh, the bottles are stunning. Love everything about McConnell's. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> Robert Gustafson was saying there, as you pointed out, Marty, beautiful bottle, good balanced whiskey, nothing bad to say about it. And uh, there's Andrew Galway. He's uh, saying hard to beat an old fashioned cocktail. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. There you go. No. no. There's Andrew. That's my partner. He is supporting us. <laughs> yeah, good man, Andrew. Good man. All right. No. <laughs> now, now, we've done a little bit of research on, on on McConnell's, and you said about the big fire. It was it was they came out to try and underplay the fire, but I, I keep saying to people, back in the day, whiskey fires were just they were ten a pen. You know, every distillery had them, um, but. There was talk about rivers of whiskey flowing out of McConnell's. Um, they, it's very underplayed, but it, it did have a huge effect on them. Now, yeah. 
So if you think about it, um, if you have a whiskey warehouse and all of that whiskey is is aging and it's been aging for a good number of years, it's not like you can just replace it overnight, um, no matter how much whiskey you're producing no. at the time. So um, it would affect anybody if, if, a, if a full warehouse was to be burnt to the ground overnight. Yeah. Now, I have a th- uh, an article here. Bear with me a wee second to bring this up. Uh, there was, we think these days about um, the likes of... Uh, the likes of Waterford talking about the quality of their barley. But there is adverts stating that the Cromac distillery was buying all of the local barley around Belfast and bringing it up in. And there's actually, there was a parliamentary submission into into the House of Commons about... There it is there, Marty. Real liqueur whiskey. There's an enormous stock of old whiskey in the Bond Warehouse at the Cromac distillery. Old Cromac is made from the finest barley in the world. It's bottled in Bond only when it's 12 years old, made from barley grown in, in County, County Down. Eden. Yep. So this idea of terroir, they were they were they were predating. <laughs> they predated all the all of the research done done by Mark Rainier and all those. He'll be raging. Mark Rainier will be oh, raging. He'll be raging. He'll be ra- He's always raging. <laughs> Passion. <laughs> no, no, the, the, so much. I've had that conversation so many times, but it's an interesting. It's an interesting conversation. I actually had had a brief conversation with one of the guys in the Belfast Whiskey about about wine and how what terroir is, um, you know, that element comes into wine too. So it's an interesting conversation. I think it's going to be had time and time again over the next number of years, isn't it? And um, another another thing is that obviously where the distillery was um, in uh, on the Cromac Distillery, right on the River Lagan, they use the water, local water too, you know, in in, in the production so yeah. about it really is, is, is a Belfast whiskey and and uh, from from Northern Ireland so uh, we hope whenever we have our distillery built here that you know, we can bring that back and, and bring that culture back to the city and have a, a city be, um, distilled whiskey up here so now I know I know you're not allowed to talk an awful lot about the actual distillery and I'll, I'll explain this when you have a list building, in Northern Ireland and in Belfast, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> I like buildings being listed. I just don't like the restrictive laws that they bring in over the top of them, that, which basically mean people wanting to repurpose buildings they fall under so many strict uh, buildings. The George Best Hotel is a great example of this. Basically, they want these buildings to sit and rot until they fall into disrepair before they allow anybody to do anything. So I know you're not allowed to talk a huge amount about it, but where is your distillery going to be? You already know that, Sadie. <laughs> I know, but other people watching don't know. Yeah, we, well, you know where we plan to have it. Like I've, I spoke to you about this before. The reason why we don't talk about it too much is because we want to make sure that whenever we're speaking about it, that we're 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 definitely it's a hundred percent let's go let's get this built so i i just stay away from it mostly funny enough uh, uh what uh, joe at, at the crawley distillery was the same way he decided he just wanted to do it and and set up and be running didn't he marty that was sur- sort of he wants to say i have done it rather than i'm going to do it yeah. yeah well i know the articles and stuff in the planning about the uh, we, the planning he got through for for the um common road jail but we need to you know, that, so that that is definitely going ahead and um yeah so until then i'm trying to focus on the brand and focus on re-establishing the brand in, in the city and um, so i will be definitely um doing a lot more work about activations and and uh you know getting our brand out there and it being part of the city again because it's a, it's a long game you know, with whiskey whiskey takes a long long time like you have to uh, eat it. The distillery has to be built first as well, which could take a while. Then also the, the liquid has to be produced um, and then it has to be cast and, and aged. And it won't be on the shelves for, for a long, maybe seven years from now. So uh, realistically, 
before then we're going to have a lot more to talk about um with different releases and um and our and the brand we have now so yeah i try not to focus on it too much because the brand that comes with just be the icing on the cake it, it is the planning permission has been passed for the crumlin road jail now the crumlin road jail for anyone who's not from belfast and doesn't or from northern ireland and doesn't know this is a jail Probably, it's my favourite tour in Belfast. Um, it's a fabulous place. It's a fabulous location. Dawes. There's loads of history in it. And the distillery is going to be actually in a wing of, of, of the, the the jail. And I can't wait for it because it's just it's just sitting there at the minute, empty. It's not doing anything. And it really needs to be, to be put forward. So I can't wait for it. Now... You said you mentioned other releases. Now the Crow Mike Distillery was famous for Old Crow. Yeah. Can can we expect a resurrection of Old Crow? Uh, it's not something we've explored yet. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, focusing more on on we've been really trying to focus on the blend and then obviously the, the releases of whiskey. So we we haven't uh, explored the option of Old Crow, but. Old Crow is a great brand, and um, I actually think that you can get a lot more Old Crow memorabilia and uh, and some of the actual original bottles than you can for McConnell's because I think they continued to trade for a bit with Old Crow um, because McConnell's was a brewery as well. You know, it had had a, a huge brewery and J and J McConnell's brewery as well, um, but. I don't know that. I actually don't know that at all. I'm not hiding anything there. I'm going to say it should make a comeback because it uh, the branding and the advertising for it is it was so ahead of its time actually because they when everybody else was doing print advertising it was just like Jameson Irish whiskey you know blah 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 they actually had graphics they actually paid for graphics and that must have been extremely expensive but which shows just how innovative and, and basically how much they were prepared to pay you know yeah exactly they did a lot of marketing um a lot of it. like marketing on some of the trains in the uk which was way ahead of its time too you know they were quite innovative yeah it, it is it's fascinating it's a fascinating place uh where, where they were and they did this was only up until very recently that they actually re-allowed you to blend or to to brew beer and distill whiskey on the same site. And they they were doing this back in, in the late nineteenth century, you know? Well it's sort of it's a bit of a no brainer, isn't it? You know, if, uh, economies of scale then and all, all of the grain and, and then, you know, making the beer but also then making whiskey too. Um so it's it's been very clever of them too to to, to do the the two. Yeah. And it's funny because we were talking earlier on. People were saying about uh, Ireland or Ulster, sorry, winning the rugby and the Ravenhill Road, which is <laughs> it's poignant. It's actually very appropriate because that's where that's where the distillery was. We're getting some really great comments in tonight, uh, uh, Sarah and Marty. Uh, McConnell's uh, are doing a great job. Great to see a brand looking to target women in cocktail market, as I once said. Uh, once again, it's a great time to come away from the old, old man's whiskey image and target a different market. Yes, I, I, I totally, I totally agree. Uh, you know, uh, and then we're getting comments about the the Crumlin Road. Uh, Michael Matthews, it's a must do whenever I get to Belfast. I like jails. Yes. <laughs> uh, can, can I can I just say I'll just I'll just put this on. The first time I did the tour, I rung a friend of mine who I knew had been, shall we say, boarding there. And I phoned him up. I'm not going into too much detail, but he says the first time I walked in, somebody walked up and reached me a pan loaf, a pound of cooked ham, and a dirty magazine. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. That was, that was his gift for coming into the jail. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, was, that was it. But the, the, the Crumman Road Jail is a fabulous place. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, boy. Uh, there you go. Uh, listen. Sarah, you've been fantastic tonight to come on with us and, and go through the, the history of uh, Fabulous McConnell's and uh, and the future. Can I can I honestly say something just for a go? You're you're incredibly prepared. See all those snippets and all you had. Of, <laughs> I'm very impressed. 
good yeah one. Well, we I have an extensive research team it's like it's like the nolan show there's 15 people helping me totally guys disclaimer i didn't provide any of that so like i am no. totally right. guys we, we have a lot of time on our hands <laughs> We've been doing nothing for a year, yeah. <laughs> you know. But believe it or not, we have we've got four shows actually in the can for when Marty goes on holiday in twenty twenty five. Oh, Justin, I'll be away long before twenty. Should I have to bloody swim? I'm going away somewhere in the not too distant future. But no, honestly, I I, I talk about the Lazarus brands, uh, and it's these brands that are brought back again that have 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 history and heritage and brought. Um, back to life and there's a some of them are very false uh, and there's a couple of them coming very soon I'm not allowed to say a huge amount about it, but they're in for a very rude awakening on, on certain levels but when people actually pay homage and heritage to the stuff the, the, the Belfast brands and, and all of that and they, and they try and reconnect with the old brands McConnell's coming back to Belfast actually building an uh, in Belfast, on a site that really needs it, and doing all of that, and also you've got an international uh, outlook because this this is not going to be just like for the Irish market, correct? Yeah, this... it's going. It's going where? Oh, um, like it already is. You know, we've already got it in in America, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Holland, the guys in Holland are incredibly supportive and enthusiastic about it. Um, Italy, you know, and we're working on a number of other other uh, areas as well. So, yeah. For, yeah so, uh, I'm not surprised. People are saying uh, it drinks like a single malt and always thought it was until a friend cor uh, corrected me recently. So, uh, there yeah. you go. It's, to be honest with you, it's, it's a very, very nice, approachable, Absolutely, do cocktails with it if you if that's what you, you're inclined to do, but it's at a very reasonable price point. It's about thirty thirty five pounds a bottle. Yeah, most most places in, in uh, here, like locally, you'll get it between thirty five and forty pounds. Um, yeah. on Amazon for about thirty six ninety nine, and then in the states, the pricing is completely different. Exactly, what probably around thirty one dollars. Yeah. So I mean. This this is this is a whiskey you could pick up and and try and like and enjoy. I mean, I everybody talks about I've I've people think I have an unlimited supply of whiskey. I have lots of bottles, but it's one of those ones that I kind of always have because I, I finish a bottle of it and then I end up a few months later buying another one just to have it because it is it's it's a really really nice approachable whiskey, and I take my I take my hat off because. I understand all the costs involved in doing the likes of the branding. Um, plus then putting all the money into the distillery, knowing that you're not going to get any return on that for a very, very long time. But sticking to the, the, the ethos of having all that is, is fabulous. And can I just say, over the last while, we've been interviewing um, a number of young, young ladies, which... Getting away from the stuffy whiskey guy sitting smoking a cigar, sitting in the thing and having a Guinness, and it's fabulous to be able to do that. It really is. Yeah, well, I I've met so many friends and um, else friends and like uh, I, could, I could name them. Like there's there's people even uh, like Sean here, he's been commenting, and I've, I you know there's there's a lot of people who being us country working for the brand so it's incredible to see and i'm really enjoying it you know yeah good i'm glad i, I was with him by my dad and although i love my dad um incredible man he passed away there in january and he was he loved whiskey like he wasn't mad for whiskey but he, he himself didn't really get into whiskey until um his mid 40s 50s so whenever i would have had a had a drink with him we had a bit of a conversation but it's good to have a conversation women there's a lot of different um women are really good with their palate and they're quite vocal about what they're tasting in a whiskey so really fun on the um belfast whiskey club whenever uh one of the other members louise like me and her sometimes go off on a bit of a tangent and paul kind of tells us off sometimes so 
Just to, just tell Paul to shut up. <laughs> That's so so the way you deal with him. I understand exactly with Paul and Justin. You have to just say, right guy, shut shut up. Uh, although I can't I can't swear in case Mark Zuckerberg kicks us off face, but I can't <laughs> say exactly what I usually say. But no, um I, th- I love the fact that there's more and more people getting into to whiskey. It's like what I was talking about in the auction. That there's twelve percent of the people buying whiskey at auction now are under thirty. 12%, 12% of, of a $60 million trade are under 30 because it's it's something nice to have. And if it doesn't go up in value, you could always drink it. <laughs> you know? Drinking more quality um, and less, um, you know, instead of just drinking for the sake of it and, and binge drinking, like people go out to a bar and, and order a whiskey or rum. Rum rum is also like people would order a real, not just rum that you would drink, but rum now and eat. It's definitely a tequila as well. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can have you can have good quality spirit now, and the fact that you can bring stuff in at a reasonable price is is a, is a big asset because there's loads of loads of loads of stuffs coming out now with limited edition cask strength, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And cask <clears throat> cask strength's okay. I had this conversation with a guy the other day, and he says I I really can't do cask strength. Because what happens is I try it a couple of times. Well, we'll bring it out, nose it, try it, and end up pissed. <laughs> so, so I don't particularly want that. I want I want something at forty percent. I like the fact that it's forty two percent because obviously there's a bit of thought as went into that too. You could easily just put it at forty and send it out. So the fact that it's a forty two gives a little bit of, of leeway and play for for people who aren't just buying it to get drunk. Yeah. 100 like definitely and i can definitely taste the extra two percent i know brand ambassador i think i'm going to say that but i definitely do whenever you blind taste it towards the 40 percent, you can tell the difference yeah you can and i i, I understand people going for the the cast strength crusade crew you know i understand i totally get what they're saying but to be honest the vast majority of people want something that they can buy to drink and and that when something starts going cash strength, the taxes on it alone start putting it out of people's out of people's price range. But I mean, cash strength's great, but I do think when you have, you know, and and it's not saying that we won't, we won't do a cash strength in the future. But when you bring then you're your staple product, the one that is going to stay and be unlikely, you're going to make it a cask strength. You know, you're going to make it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, and uh, I think I think what you're doing is in some ways different from a lot of the other people who are bringing out limited edition stuff, basically get it onto market um, and and establish their credentials. You've brought out a product that's an everyday whiskey. It's, it's, it's something that everybody can buy and have a drink anytime, um, which uh, in its own way is bold in and of itself. Well, I think that the, the idea behind that um, really is because it is a long game and it's that we're wanting to be here for for a long time so uh we're what not that every other brand isn't but it's just that we wanted to get this one right um and have have the bottle everything about it it's taken time it's taken a long time to get here a lot of planning and um, bottle molds because it's a different bottle than you know standards there's another no other bottles that look like this so it's just taken a long time to get from idea concept planning bottled onto the shelf so we're not going to rush the next step just for the sake of it no. so, yeah. so give us give the people watching a, a nosing and a tasting and let them tell them what you think okay so have you got it there justin or is it just no 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 i i i, I don't have it i don't have it there too tonight well i can don't worry about it. I, I I get punished like this every week. Because you, you, you don't you don't want it like this, Justin. You want a bloody umbrella and a, a cherries and all that and white lemonade and all that stuff on it. We drop a Malibu and Tia Maria. That's the way I you don't like would, Malibu and I don't like Tia Maria. Well, whatever else shit you would put in it. That's it. <laughs> what you get is um, you get honey, um, a little bit of butterscotch and some white pepper. Uh, a bit of a spiciness on the nose but I think the more you smell it you get like a 
a tropical fruit. I get a lot of melon on the nose. Uh, it's not in our tasting notes, but it's something that I get personally. And I think that whenever you taste it, it will definitely come through. There's a nice fresh oak on it. I, I get, uh, you're probably getting the melon. I'm getting that fresh oak. And it's, it's not too dissimilar, you know. It's something different, you know. And um, I remember I was early on and when I started, I did, you know, my WSAT. And one of the most interesting things he said to me was that not using the words like sweet or salted, you know, you, you because they're just words that um, automatically your brain goes through, but whiskey doesn't have any sugar in it. So basically... Melon is something that is sweet and not not sweet. You're smelling something that is sweet, like melon, or like or like um, some biscuits or chocolate. That that that's what you're you're getting, like a memory of something that you pour. So um, what I get on the nose is that uh, melon, vanilla, butterscotch, and there is a spiciness to it as well. Yeah, there is. Probably from the the bourbon casks that it was rested in. So. Then on the palate, melon. If, if I know I've maybe put that in your head, but that's the biggest note that I get through. Um, uh, I get butterscotch, like where there's no. I also get a small chocolate note too. Um, and then as that sort sort of rests on the palate, um, the spice goes through and the white pepper. Um, it's more of a, like a savory note. Um, a, a savory pepper. Um. And then the the oak comes through for me at that stage. It doesn't come through for me on, on the nose, but it comes through for me on the palate. Yeah. Um, but also interestingly, and I hadn't got this before, but you're like banana chips, dried banana chips. Someone said that to me before, and that's all I can get now. <laughs> I think <don't laughs> logical, but um, they said that to me yet. That is the power um, of suggestion. Once, <laughs> once, once somebody tells you something, it's like, yeah, that's it. and then that's what you get for a while. Exactly, but the finish on it, longer finish on it. Um, it's not a hugely complex whiskey, but it has a more complexity than a than a blend like a 40, 40 or any other forty percent blends that I've, I've tried. Um, mm -hmm. Not saying there is a great, comp a more complex forty percent whiskeys, but I just know the first time I tried it, I found it really interesting. Um, but also it's got a, a, an oily texture to it as well, so. I, I'm a big I'm a big mouthfeel fan. I I think mouthfeel. I was asked the other day that I think um, palate or or finish was more important, and I think I think the finish is much more important than anything else, and that comes from a mouthfeel. If you've got a nice oily whiskey, the, you the, the like finish. The, you don't like a chemical aftertaste, Murray, isn't that it? I yeah. I don't, but I don't like uh, when you get a whiskey that's very watery. You don't get a nice mouthfeel, but when you when when you get a a nice viscous whiskey that goes uh, when it comes into your palate. It go, it leaves your mouth, uh, and and you always get something coming up after it. Which which even if you don't particularly like the taste of the whiskey, it gives you something to work with. It's something yeah. It's always going to have something interesting that pops up because just the way whiskey works, it it, it goes through certain stages, and a nice nice mouthfeel is is critically important. You know. Exactly. Some great comments coming in tonight. Robert Gustav was saying, power of suggestion. That's why I tell people I'm smart. Eventually, someone will believe it. I, I have the opposite uh, problem. Uh, uh, people think you're intelligent and you have to tell them you're stupid. <laughs> no, it's the other way, right? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. Uh, uh, people are feeling sorry for me. Uh, Mark saying, poor Justin. You look so sad while you sample the whiskey and you survey your attack. I have to concentrate sometimes to make sure something's happened because the signal's been a wee bit jittery tonight with, with, with uh, Sarah. Uh, uh, and uh, somebody, Mark, saying that again, you should do a whiskey cocktail show and Marty do the backup. The only trouble is, <laughs> Marty admitted to me the microphone, he finally got the sentence right this week. <laughs> and, he, and even though he's a state-of-the-art M1 Macintosh, he, he, he's not he's not truly converted. Uh, uh, and then we're getting some really great comments in tonight. I think that they're misfiring. What's your score out of 10? Thanks again. Keep up the good work. Ask Sarah what her score out of 10 is. <laughs> I'm not writing this one. 
she has to <laughs> she has to say ten because she works her. Of course, that, that, that's 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 not that's not that's not fair. That's now, whenever fair. whenever I do my uh, tastings, I always put them in the same categories because there's no point in me trying to compare something at two hundred, three hundred pound, or a nineteen seventies whiskey with something of today because it's just, they're not really comparable, and it's it's, it's, it's just a strange thing. This this is a very good quality whiskey. It has nice balance. It's a nice mouthfeel. It's got it's got nice flavour to it, uh, and a decent amount of complexity without necessarily being massive, massively complex. Sarah's already said that. Um, I'll review this at some point and post it up, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll get to see what I think of it, and it, it, it'll not be bad, I assure you. Yeah, Trevor, it's not fair for them. Like it's too, especially live. <laughs> no, and it is. It is really live. It is really live. That's where there's the delay. Uh, let me see. Has anyone else noticed how much more people care about when Carlson Sir took over, and how much we now know? Well, uh, if you've got uh, somebody like this uh, singing your praises, uh, that uh, knows that we have done our homework because she must have done her homework. Uh, that uh, well, it's always half the battle, isn't it? Uh, we actually we 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 have been talking to people that uh, don't want to come on and don't want to talk about it. Isn't that right? It's it's, it's bizarre. bizarre. Uh, I'll not, not get into it. I'll not get into it. It's bizarre. But, 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 but like this, you have to remember Sarah's a paid employee, and for her to take the time out at ten o'clock, half ten on a Saturday night to come and talk about her job and do this, that shows you the level of commitment and passion she has for the brand. And and fair play to her. You know, well done. Well done. Getting tempted with, it, with when I was having my Chinese earlier, I was getting attempted with a beer and I was having to keep myself. <laughs> Sarah, trust me, you don't have to worry about doing that. <laughs> coming on here half drunk because I'll let you in a little secret. There's plenty of times I've come on here and I've been <laughs> much more Guinness than was necessary. Before. Come on, <laughs> he's, like, he's like Reginald Boozerquay, you know, on, on, on the ITN news 1978 <laughs> or whatever it was. Uh, Keith, Keith Floyd presenting the, the, the whiskey. Or the, he's the not, he's not really. I'm stone, I'm stone cold sober every week. We do this, I have to be, otherwise, I'd press the wrong button. I know you're nuts without drink. I mute, mute, mute myself. There we go. There's 77 minutes. Uh, nah. Good night, and uh, 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 thanks for coming on. And uh, there you go. Uh, well, Sarah, uh, thank thanks. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, whatever's left of it. And listen, thank you very much, and we'll stay in touch. And best of luck with everything you do. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Good night. Good night. No, Murray, what about that for a show tonight? Fabulous. Did Sarah drop off there, did she? She's away. She's away. She's away. She's away. She's away. She we're still we're still live, by the way. What we're still live. All right. Oh we're still no, um I know I know there was a couple of times Sarah's um volume or mic went in and out a few times. Yes, but yes. No, whenever you whenever you see people, um, especially a young a, a young person like Sarah, uh, you know. Starting off and being passionate about about the brand that she she's representing, it's it's I mean it's an amazing thing, and it shows you that the, the whiskey whiskey's different than than the likes of vodka, where you have to I mean vodka you have to augment <laughs> what you have, but the 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 fact that is that whiskey incorporates so much on Belfast. Um, the 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 spirit of that, the 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 ethos behind the company, the fact that an employee's prepared to come on this late on a Saturday night and stay sober <laughs> for coming on is is in and of itself a mark of just exactly what what's going on, and it's fabulous that if you've, you've got somebody totally different from the old image of whiskey, do you know what I mean? Where you have Michael oh, Massey is saying, tell us what you really think. Now she's gone. <laughs> no, she's listen, still watching it. <laughs> of course she's still watching it. I, I tell you, the fact that they've paid heritage and homage to the old bottlings, <laughs> I tell you, I, I done a little bit of research on just how much the likes of these, this getting your own bottle made and, and designed. This is not cheap. This is 
No, most people run with, stock, with stock bottles, don't they? They go with stock bottles. And loads of people, what they do is they look for um, seconds. So the likes, the likes of Diageo, for example, will run in and they'll turn around and say, oh, we want this sort of bottle. And we'll deny this and then go, ah, we don't like the look of it. Okay, now you've made the moulds, you've done all that sort of stuff. And they'd say, we don't like the look of it. Other people will come in behind them and say, ah, we'll take them, we'll take that second bottle. And they get it a lot cheaper. This is not that kind of thing. Even if you take off the the, the 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 cork off the top of this, you know there's money been spent on this, and they're only selling this at, at, at like thirty five pound a bottle, some thirty thirty five thirty to forty pound a bottle. That's unbelievably cheap, really. Um, when you consider what you're getting, um, it's a good quality whiskey. It really is for for the price point. It's at. it's fantastic. Excellent stuff, and uh, there you go. And uh, that's it. Uh, very strange week in uh, the country, yeah. really. But there you go. Uh, oh, I see Robert's just saying, show the cork. Look at the weight of that, Robert. Can you hear? Can you hear that? That's how much weight's in that. And that alone, that alone shows you how much... Um, Time there is. Um, can I just say, His Royal Highness Prince Philip passed away, and there was a thing on the other day about Prince Philip. Can I just say, I loved the man. I thought he was hilarious. And my favourite story about Prince Philip is the opening of the Welsh Parliament. And when he opened the Welsh Assembly building, he looked out, and there was a bunch of guys playing the steel drums. You know that, like, ding, 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 ding. And he literally says, who's that standing beside the drums? And it was, somebody explained to him, it was the Welsh Deaf Children's Choir. And he said, Deaf, st standing down there is little wonder. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite ones was when he was at the Guinness Storehouse when it reopened, and there's this nice big black, fresh, creamy pint sitting for him. And he normally follows on behind Her Majesty uh, immediately. <laughs> he was lingering and lingering <laughs> and lingering and lingering. And she eventually looked round and he had to leave it sitting there. Yeah. There you and, go. But I guess in a world of, of everybody being PC and not afraid to say it, I love the fact that he actually just, that every so often just said what he thought. Um, and good on him. I have, I have cousins that went and done the Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award and went on to do massive things. So, yeah. Good on them. Excellent stuff. Excellent show. Thank you and good night. Take care, folks. <laughs>